Deputy Governor Lucky Aye that he will preside over Undo ESCO's meeting. And whistleblowing. Whistleblowing policy and corruption in Nigeria. I am Bola Oba, and this is Plus Politics. After months of bickering between the executive and the legislative arms in Ondo State, the Deputy Governor, Loki Ayeda Tiwa, presided over a state executive council meeting in Akure, the state capital, on Thursday. The ESCO's meeting occurred after months of political wrangling between the Deputy Governor and Governor Rotimi Akredolu's loyalists. The crisis was occasioned by the absence of the Governor, who has been out of the state for months due to ill health. Last Friday, President Bola Tinubu summoned the warring factions to a meeting in Abuja where it was agreed that the deputy governor should continue to perform his duties as deputy governor. The ESCO meeting might be an indication that the political impasse in the state may have come to an end. However, the governor's second term since January 2023 has not been a smooth sail as he had to be flown abroad for treatment of a medical condition. The 67-year-old politician returned to Nigeria in September after months overseas, but has been in a bad The Oyo State capital, Akred Olu, has been under intense pressure from opposition parties to resign or hand over power to his deputy in line with the 1999 constitution. Joining us is a human rights lawyer and political analyst, Alan Shawure. Alan, good to have you again on Plus Politics. Good evening. So, can we say in real politic terms that there is a modicum of progress, but in unconstitutional terms, uh, it's still same of the shame? Hello, Alan. How would you? I can hear you. Uh, how would you want to respond to my my uh, uh, inquiry? Is this the stem of so, the... Go ahead, go there ahead. There is so, so much motions, you know, in those days without movement. <laughs> what is constitutional cannot be done by mere political meandering. So I do not expect uh, much difference until we are honest with ourselves and accept that the governor is ill and for now he needs to attend to his head and allow for the deputy governor which is provided for by the Constitution, to steer the ship of the state. Simple. I have so much respect for the president, and I'll be waiting <laughs> to see the outcome of the resolution, how it will be put in operation. And today we have seen it. It's not going to work. Somebody must be in charge. And that's the law. The president cannot suspend the constitution. <laughs> he cannot like one person above 5.3 billion good people of all those states who desire good governance. And I'm very sure by now, even the president will be getting a report that that resolution is not. He must be in charge of all those states. Somebody, is it that the governor? or an acting governor. That is the law. Uh, so we, we, we must embrace the law, the provision of the law. In real politic terms, you will agree with me that there is at least a modicum of a movement. There were, there were weeks on end, weeks, if not months, 
that the Executive Council could not even hold its meeting. Uh, today, it held its meeting. Uh, but apart from that, uh, at least there is now a semblance of governance. Uh, you, you and some other uh, puritanical constitutional, constitutionalists may, uh, and I'm sorry, you know, it's not, it's not even a derogatory term. Uh, but you know, those of you who are puritan puritanical constitutionalists may want, uh, may want, you know, willy-nilly that uh, Akredolu must submit his letter of resignation, and uh, I hear that he will be made the substantive governor. But this is better than what uh, what it was or uh, what it's been for months. How would you respond to that? Yes, I, I, I am not one of those people who are saying Governor Luaro to me, Akere Dolu, she'll resign ultimately. What I'm saying and what I've been saying and what I will see say is that the governor should simply step aside, attend to his health, transmit power. He is still the governor, but he should transmit power to his deputy to continue as acting. That will not stop him from receiving his salary. That will not stop him from the state taking up his medical bill. But somebody must be in charge of Ondo State. Like you rightly observed, the state executive meeting here today, if you have had any outcome, there was nothing. It was just mere ceremony. Because even as a lawyer, I can tell you authoritatively, the person who can preside over the committee of a state, is that the governor? or an acting governor. There's no provision that the deputy governor can preside over uh, S committee. He must be acting governor. He must have that capacity of either the governor or an acting governor. So why are we running away from the fact? Why are we running away from the obvious? The, the, suit, the suit that uh, uh, you people filed, I guess the last time we, we spoke, you intimated us with the fact that you have filed uh, a litigation concerning uh, the ruling party respecting the integrity of the 1999 constitution. How far with that uh, with that litigation now? Yes, that, that is one of the major mistakes that the Abuja Accord has uh, recorded. Some of us, so you could call uh, stakeholders, were not invited to the meeting. So. The problem is a problem of Ondo State. But at that meeting, it was reduced to the problem of APC. And with due respect to whoever uh, conceived the idea of that meeting, that was a mistake. And Mr. President presided over that meeting as the chairman of APC and not, not as the president of, uh, of Nigeria. So we are happy that they are come out with their own resolution. But for more, some of us who are stakeholders, we consider that our interest is, uh, is uh, connected to this. We are in court. So their decision will not affect us. If I am not part of your meeting, how will your decision affect me? To God be the glory. Let them put their uh, decision or their resolution into practice. Why we pursue our own different and independent uh, but, but, you, legal pursuit. but you and I know that uh, the wheel of justice can sometimes be very, very slow in this uh, in our jurisdiction. Uh, and within the context of the time left now for the tenure of Ogbeni Akredolu, of Arakuni Akredolu to end, uh, the the action may indeed be be ultimately superfluous. How would you respond to that? Yeah, let me bring you up to speed with what is happening on the state. A, a state high court today has granted an order stopping the inauguration. Hello, we can hear you. Hello, how would you? You said the state high court had granted an order stopping the, the inauguration of, uh, of, of uh, the caretaker money or uh, the terrorist management committee today, which is 
very management committee at the various local government, you know, in those states, the one that are constitutional and the one that are uh, uh, created recent. And the court has said no. Because that again is unconstitutional. Section 7 of the Constitution is clear. Shall be administered by democratically elected people. So putting up the caretaker is illegal. The court has come clear to say you can't do that. And so that is a plus for the people. Okay. Um, um, Alan Shawara, uh, we may have. We are, uh, we Will of uh, Justice grants slowly. We are already having constitutional crisis in those states. Approvals are getting stalled. So we get to a state where everything will just stand still. And they will have no option. It is either they bring out Donald Trump to be a Hillary Clinton to preside or to continue his office, or they willingly allow somebody, which is the deputy governor, to assume the position of acting governor. There is no two way about it. There, there are no two ways about it. Uh, some um, may want to say that um, uh, as we speak, uh, whether uh, people like you like it or not, uh, there is progress, at least relative to the total state of uh, total state of uh, inactivity and non-action that prevailed for months. Uh, 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 so if the court, which is the only, uh, only constitutional recourse that people like you have, if the courts have not pronounced regarding what prevails now, at least those who those who want to see governance will at least be, be taking respite in this contraption that, uh, that has started uh, existing from today. How would you respond to that? Whatever is happening now is still widow dressing. It's widow dressing. It has not solved the problem. We have today, again, flooded on the new various new media platforms forge signature of the governor forge signature of the governor that has to be investigated who has been forging the signature of the governor who so what they are trying to do is with the dressing you must address the issue on its route is the governor Available is he on grant to carry but, on his duty? If you are certain, no. If you are what certain, does the law say? Whenever the governor is not available. Uh, hello, hello, Alan Shore. If you are certain uh, fraud or forgery, uh -huh. if you are certain fraud or forgery, you know that's just mere allegation. It will take a court of competent jurisdiction to pronounce that those signatures are forged. Because you never know, maybe the governor himself signed uh, those documents that you are uh, alleging to be, to be forged. You know, when, when, when I make pronouncement on national TV like this, you know that I am equally prepared and I'm ready to take up legal and constitutional means to challenge such. We have been calling for such documents. I will go to court the moment we have our, uh, evidence, the moment we gather everything, we are going to go to court to see who has been forging the signature of the governor. No, I, I, I'm telling you that uh, I also have a duty in journalism, I have a duty in, uh, in ethics to let you know that in so much as you can you can assert that something is forged until that thing is pronounced by a court of competent jurisdiction, it will stand as an allegation. Do we agree on that? I'm not saying that it is not an allegation. <laughs> an allegation can be broadcast on national TV. I am alleging that some element in you know, those state has been forging the signature of the governor. 
And I'm saying that I will take it up and some other legal minds to challenge this by the time we completed guarding our evidence. So there's nothing to fear. <laughs> I know you have to protect the ethics of your profession. But I'm just saying that allegations are real. That some elements have been forging the signature of the government. And that's where uh, we are in open those things. Uh, uh, Alan Shawore, uh, some persons in Ondo State who at this juncture don't want to come on camera are saying that uh, people like you are saying that people like you are, are um, you know are, are surreptitiously working for the deputy governor that you are indeed that you are indeed um, are making this uh, false because you uh, latently, latently, uh, or, you know, supporting the uh, machination of letting the deputy governor be made substantive governor because you are his person. How would you want to respond to that? That's an allegation, but we have. To, uh, I have to ask you that direct question. It is the same people who blame the opposition. Oh, there's no opposition in Ondo State. Opposition is dead. It is the same people who said, ah, this can, could not have happened in the days of uh, vibrant youth in Ondo State. The same people will turn around and say, I'm working for the deputy governor to God be the glory. I want to work for progress. I want to work for my conscience. I want to work for the good people of Ondo State. So who is working for this darkness, this Angel, uh, uh, messengers of darkness. Who has brought this darkness on those states? Who has so, created so this? So you are telling you are telling the world that this is basically an altruistic duty, primarily for the constitutional integrity of of, of Nigeria, and indeed primarily for the respect of the 1999 Constitution. Exactly. I, I, I expected, even by now, that Mr. President should have invited the Attorney General for his advice in the situation in Ondo State. I expected that some of our senior lawyers, because this is the same position, that if Ghani Fawemi, who is incidentally was from Ondo State, would have gone to court to challenge, and you agree with me, that many of our senior lawyers in Ondo State are not talking. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Alan. I really want to appreciate you. Uh, about time we ended it, we go for a short break. And when we're back, we take on the second segment of the show.